Support School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here for Corn School. We're just outside Lucan, Ontario, and joined by Wheat Pete. Absolutely, Bernard. And it's great to actually talk about something other than wheat for a yeah. change. As much as I love wheat, we got a corn's a rotation crop. We need it in the rotation, so it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Hey, we're on your farm. Absolutely, yeah. This awesome. is my good farm, too. This is the best farm that I farm. Nice dirt, really high productive. I, I'll be disappointed if we don't break 200 bushel corn here. Generally, we would be in that range at least. Awesome. Now, we got a lot of flags behind us, and this is by design because this winter, SWAC, we heard from Randy Dowdy, National Corn Growers Champion. He talked about a flag test, about how important even emergences and how growers should use a flag test to test that emergence. We've got one right behind us. Absolutely, so it, it's really great that Randy gave us this thought process. He was actually flagging corn plants 12 hours apart. So he would go out at, I don't know, seven in the morning and come back at seven at night. There's a whole bunch of us doing this this year just to see how much impact that makes. He was saying 12 hours could have really significant differences in terms of yield. Our data wouldn't necessarily support that, so we've gone to a day, because 12 hours is just a little bit tough to get there all the time across the number of sites that we're doing. Every day we come out here roughly at the same time of day and we flag the ones that have emerged. And then we will take those through to yield to see if we actually get this massive difference in between. In the old research data, pretty clear that if you have a two leaf stage difference, then you're looking at a very significant yield differential. If you get a four leaf stage difference, then that yield differential essentially becomes huge. That, that plant that's four leaves behind is, is worth very little. But here we're talking about you know, a day as opposed to two leaves, which we would normally think is more like a two week difference in, in emergence. So really kind of cool thought process to see, hey, how, how important is this really under our conditions? Right. Now, the whole the real story is going to be, you know, seen at harvest. But we have a story developing here already, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really cool. First off, the one thing this has done, which I consider myself reasonable agronomist, I've never come to the field every day and looked and flagged just to see how much difference it actually makes. And it's really, really intriguing to get out in the field that much and see. So I can tell you right now that I have one row, I have a four row planter, I'm a massive farmer. One row is either planting a little bit shallower or a little different because it's emerging just a little bit earlier, a little bit more uniform than the other three rows. So what do I do now? I go back to my corn planter, try to figure out what is different about that particular row. So that's interesting that you can learn that. In one of the other studies that out there, they're looking at a 48 row planter and they're actually looking at what's developing as sort of like a W pattern, almost like the wings weren't quite planting as deep and, and in the centers, it was planting a little deeper, and then when you came together in the middle, it wasn't quite as deep again, and so they almost get this bit of a W pattern in terms of emergence. And so again, looking at how the planter is working, really kind of cool stuff. So even if there's no yield difference here, we're learning a ton about how our planters react right. under different conditions. Well, I'm seeing a lot of different colored flags here, so I know there's some, all, some, some differences in this emergence already. Let's go take a look. Absolutely. So we have three different treatments here. This is part of our, our plant green or our roots not iron project. And so I've taken my four row planter and we've flagged each row separately. And in this plot, we've done with neonate treated seed and fungicide only treated seed on each side. So I actually have four rows of neonic treated seed, the whole planter, and four rows of non-neonic treated seed, the whole planter, and we're looking at emergence differences there, seeing how that impacts. This particular plot is the conventional best management practices. So this was soybeans last year. After the soybeans came off, we came in here and planted oats, and you can see a little bit of oat stubble down here. Uh, in terms of that being left over. The oats actually overwintered, which is pretty rare, but they did. And you can see there's four different colored flags. The orange flags all emerged on Saturday. I was here Friday, no corn up. Saturday, and some of these rows, the number of plants that emerged, amazing. So this is really working well. The pink flags are day two, Sunday. The white flags are Monday. The green flags, you can see the odd green flag, that's today, that's Tuesday. Virtually 100% of these plants are up. My plant population, 33,000. 
Planters often are set so that they overplant a little according to the book. And in these, I'm getting anywhere from 32 to 35,000. So in four days, I essentially have all those plants up. No much difference in this plot between the neonic and the non-neonic treated. And we'll come back at harvest, we'll follow them through. The other thing I'm really intrigued about is, so they all emerge the same day, but do they develop the same? Because we often see as we go through that, that year that we get these other differences. So that'll be interesting to watch as well, but that's this plot. So again, this is our conventional plot, if you will. No cover crop here whatsoever. Just no-tilled into the soybean stubble. I'm a no-till farmer. Once again, very nice stand, very even emergence. You can see very few green flags, a lot of orange flags, a lot of pink flags. And pretty much what you'd really want to say happens is we have no gaps, we have no doubles. Everything's looking really good in this conventional tilled plot in terms of uniform emergence. So before we go to the plant green plot, let's just quickly explain the flags. Day one, Saturday, that's this plant, orange flag. Day two, the pink flag, we're here. Day three is the white flag, so that's Monday, yesterday, and that plant emerged. And here's the late emerger in this plot, day four, and he's right here. And you can already start to see with the orange flags that those plants are a little bit bigger. The pink flags aren't far behind, but each day is just a tad different in terms of its emergence. Kind of really cool that we can already see those differences showing up. So this is our plant green plot, and this looks burnt off right now, and that's good. We've killed everything, but when we planted, this rye was still alive. So this was rye, cereal rye, winter rye, call it what you will, that we planted after the soybeans came off last fall came in here and planted and what's intriguing is we have this concept that underneath all that residue it would be wetter. There wasn't much difference in moisture but if anything this was a tad drier at, at planting and that's because the rye had pulled a little bit of moisture out of the, out of the ground. We're in a wet climate, so that's a good thing. That means that the soil conditions were actually really good in terms of when I planted into it. However, when I look at my emergence, my emergence isn't nearly as uniform as what I'm getting in the other two treatments. It sort of makes perfect sense. When I plant into the middle of one of these rye root balls, it's just great soil structure. Everybody's saying, yeah, great soil structure. My planter worked really well in here but that's going to be cooler because of the effect of that rye residue on top of it, and that's going to slow down the emergence. So you can look at this, and you can just see how many more white flags I have, a few more green flags, and not everything's up here yet. The other really interesting part of this story becomes the neonic versus non-neonic. So already in my four rows without the insecticide on them, I can start to see some insect injury. I'm getting plants that have emerged and they've already been cut off. And so we were wondering how much impact that will have in terms of the final outcome. And, and really interesting as well to tie this back to Clarence Swanton and the whole plant green concept and how much impact that has. So at the end of the day, what do we have right now? We have a flag farm. But by golly, come October, we're going to be back out here. We're going to harvest each one of these plants by the day of emergence. And I'll be back here. This plot's not all up yet. There might be the odd corn plant in the other two. I doubt it, but maybe. We'll be flagging them with different colors. And we'll just keep coming back until everything's up. We'll watch them through the growth period because I'm intrigued to see how they evolve, whether the better structure here means they stay more even than other places. We'll just have to figure that out at harvest. Every cob gets harvested by row, and by the day it emerged, we'll hand shell those, we'll weigh them. Poor Shane, my technician, is gonna go nuts at harvest because this is gonna be a whack of work, but we'll learn something out of this, and next year we'll know even better how important that even emergence is.